Foodborne illness sickens an estimated 76 million Americans every year, resulting in 235,000 hospitalizations and 5,000 deaths. Many of these illnesses could be prevented through proper food handling practices. Foodborne illness is expensive. Businesses lose anywhere from 10 to $83 billion a year as a result of foodborne illness. Again, proper handling of food can prevent many of these losses. Most food contamination comes from three distinct categories, chemical, physical, and biological. Chemical contamination usually occurs as the result of chemicals being improperly stored or from using chemicals in excess concentrations. Physical contamination is usually the result of an object finding its way into food. Objects may include hair, bandages, fingernails, metal shavings, or machinery parts. Biological contamination is the focus of this video, and there are five main categories. Bacteria, viruses, parasites, protozoan, and fungus and yeast. The effects of most of these biological contaminants can be controlled easily by remembering the things bacteria need to live and reproduce. The best way to remember this is by using an acronym called FAT-TOM. F is for food, A is for acidity, T is for temperature, T is for time, O is for oxygen, and M is for moisture. If we can remove or control these factors, we can greatly reduce the incidence of foodborne illness. Bacteria grow best between 41 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature range is known as the danger zone, and the less time food spends in that zone, the safer it will be. Cook foods thoroughly. Keep hot food hot and cold food cold. Use a thermometer to track temperature. Properly cool foods. Use an ice bath to cool hot foods. Use shallow pans. Divide into smaller portions to cool. Reheat cooked foods to 165 degrees. Properly thaw frozen foods in the refrigerator, under cold running water, or as part of the cooking process. Properly thawing, cooking, cooling, and reheating foods will help reduce the chance of foodborne illness. But all of these efforts can be defeated if the people preparing the food haven't taken efforts to keep themselves clean. The most important thing you can do is wash your hands on a regular basis. Always wash your hands after using the restroom, touching your face or body, using tobacco products, taking out the garbage, handling dirty dishes, handling raw foods, and between glove use. Idaho law requires the use of gloves if you're handling ready-to-eat foods, so please do it. Wearing gloves does not replace hand washing. Wash first, then put on the gloves. Change gloves regularly when they become soiled or damaged. Wash hands between glove changes. If you don't feel well, you probably shouldn't go to work. If you do, report your illness to the supervisor, who may decide to exclude you from certain food handling duties or send you home. Regularly clean and sanitize surfaces that come in contact with foods. Whenever the surface gets dirty, when switching between raw and ready-to-eat foods, and between food preparation tasks. Make sure you're properly cleaning dishes and equipment. Most dishwashers rely on chemicals and temperature to ensure the dishes come out clean and sanitized. If you wash by hand, use hot soapy water and rinse with hot water. Air dry the equipment. Store equipment in a clean, dry place. It's important to only use food from approved sources. This means using only USDA inspected meats, grade A milk, prepared foods from sources regulated by the USDA, FDA, or local health department, and don't use home canned foods. Store food only in clean, dry areas. Rotate food, first in, first out. Date mark any ready to eat potentially hazardous foods. The best way to control disease vectors like insects and rodents is to deny them access to food. Keep the kitchen and storage areas clean and keep the doors closed. Keep all chemicals away from food preparation and storage areas. Label everything and follow written directions. If you follow these recommendations, you'll be helping to protect the public that you serve by reducing the potential for foodborne illness. If you'd like to learn more, the Central District Health Department offers certification classes in food safety. Visit our website or call for more information. On behalf of Central District Health, I thank you for taking the time to learn about food safety. We wish you well in your food service career.